This is me just responding to various questions and comments, even if they're old comments that I got on various different videos. I never censor my comments. Always encourage people to jump in on the conversation, whether we agree, disagree, or agree to disagree. Always say your piece. Pull my pants up. All right. All right, me. Do you think it's better and safer uh, anyone with who has the ability, people to be able to defend themselves uh, in space, even though it violates space treaty? Well, I think that's going on anyway. Um, yeah, like, I mean, it wouldn't... I, I know it's already going on. Like, I mean, uh, you've got satellites, satellite warfare. You've got, uh, you know, nukes in space, so to speak. Uh, you've got all that stuff already. Uh, you got the Star Wars program, uh, satellite killers, uh, you know, these, these space vehicles that pretty much can move at will in space. Uh, I've seen experiments with them. I don't know how effective they are and how often you have to... Uh, you know, go and maintain them, stuff like that. But these little, uh, basically, satellite killers, they can maneuver in, up, down, left, right. They just got thrusters all over the place. And the, I saw a Japanese experiment with one. It was U.S. research, but it's like this thing did this in, you know, in a room like, you know, a bigger room like this on Earth, where the thing goes up. <laughs> it's like moving around like that with all these thrusters. So, like, I mean, this thing can reverse <laughs> whatever, uh, how effective and long range they are, I don't know, but they just have to get into place to make a kill shot on a satellite. The rest of the time, they can just go in orbit. You know, I forget how many objects are in space right now. Uh, there's like 600 or something, some odd satellites up there or something like that. I don't know how many's up there, but uh, quite a few. But that's going to happen anyway, but, you know, it'd be nice to be able to back it off a bit, but I don't know. Governments are crazy, right? Uh, what is the ultimate goal? I forget who said uh, this, but it's easier to kill one million people than to control one million people. I think it was probably Stalin. Um, Ma Mao or Stalin. Uh, they want the population uh, population down to no more than 500 million, as stated by the Georgia Guidestones. Plus, I think uh, many of them really just get off on doing it. I, I think there is a satanic element there for sure, or a sadistic, whatever it is, yeah. They believe themselves to be gods, and everyone else just pawns to manipulate as they see fit. They are already quite insane to protection uh, protection in these families and are really inbreds for thousands of years. Good video. Um, yeah, the um, the Georgia Guidestones thing, I mean, the guy who made it, they kind of tracked him down, and he's, uh, I think he was an Astrozorian, uh, which uh, is an ancient religion from Iran, uh, that type of thing. And then it turns out he's more Illuminati, whatever. And there's a mystery surround that. But then, of course, it was like, oh, no, these are just, uh, you know, uh, these are just, uh, it's art, you know, whatever. But uh, UNESCO, uh, basically the UN has this as a national heritage site. And it looks like it was either Rothschilds or Rockefellers that uh, basically paid for the building of these, the Georgia Guidestones. And then you've got the Denver Airport. So they got all this weird Illuminati stuff. Um, SGT report just put out at the make, you know, from the making of this video, they just put out a thing on this fashion show with extreme satanic elements to it. And you see it and it's just like, oh, so over the top, you know, like it's so over the top. Now, that said, you know, just because you see it ever, uh, there are some people that are like, well, they like horror movies and gore movies and, you know, satanic symboling and stuff like that, and whatever, but they're not really satanic. And you could be seeing some of that too, but... The people at the top, they usually pretty much are satanic. You know, like they, they, you know, they do take it as a serious religion. You can clearly see that. So who knows uh, what'll come of it? But I, I think the, the best thing to do is just expose the sickness for what it is. Now that said, there's a bit of a catch-22 here. Even if we know and we roll on the elites, well, the elites, if they pull the plug on the system, mainly an economic collapse, they could depopulate without firing a shot. People would just starve to death. Um, that type of thing. So. It's kind of one of those things that the only thing you can do is be prepared because the other thing that gets people killed is when food becomes scarce, people become violent. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, Henry Kissinger said it best, you know, food is a weapon. And his number one priority, you know, our number one priority should be to depopulate the third world. Well, the best thing to do is just leave the third world alone. It'll, it, you know, nature will just, you know, if you have more kids than you could feed, then, you know, it's not going to make it. So that that's how you deal with that. You don't inflate it and just keep, you know, maybe teach these people how to grow food for themselves. But, again, like, to try to, you know, the, the world population, I think, grows by about 80 million a year. And most of that's third world. So, when you're looking at it like that, yes, uh, I don't think there's, uh, I don't think we're overpopulated. Uh, there is a, it's mostly a resource issue, uh, mismanagement of resources. Uh, poverty and war can take, you know, <clears throat> will take so many people. 
uh, mismanagement will take much, much more. And that's what you see with the United Nations and stuff. Get people hooked on to these food programs so that uh, food markets can't develop properly in those countries. And then, you know, because people are, people are going to go to the plane, the UN plane that has the free food in it, rather than go to their local market, which will create wealth uh, in their countries. And that, like, it's not like these people that are flying these planes around the world don't know this. They know that they have to teach these people how to fish. You know, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him to fish, you, uh, you feed him for a lifetime. And that's not an easy task, especially when you're uh, dealing with a lot of very third world low IQ people. They don't get it, you know. But you can get them moving in the right direction, ease off the, you know, the inflationary population of, of feeding people that can't sustain themselves. Uh, I know Bill Gates is out there trying to sterilize the third world, you know, you know but that, that's not nice either. So there's, there's no easy answer, but the, the most logical thing to do is let the third world be to itself. That way it doesn't, you know, you can help them how to develop resources. That's fine. But if they can't, if they can't maintain or sustain their own resources that you built for them, then you can't really help these people in the long run. So the best thing to do then is to not inflate the population. And the best way to not inflate the population is, you know, don't bring in more food. <laughs> you know, like, say, look, this is all we got. You guys got to, you know, you, you, you can't learn. That's not on us. That's on you. You got to be able to help yourselves. And if they can do that, that's fine. But if they don't do that, then, you know, you're just, every time there's a food shortage, it's like uh, 20 million die, 50 million die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, because those people, they wouldn't be there if it wasn't for these food pop things, creating even more poverty. Whereas if, you know, as soon as you get these mass die-offs, yes, there's, there's more food for these people again. But because they haven't learned to be agrarian yet, uh, to a you know a great degree, some of them have, and I know some of the areas in the world. Well, you know, it's it's not easy to to survive. But I mean, there's people that survive in the Sahara Desert, and there's people that survive up in the Arctic. So if you can survive like that, you can survive anywhere. It's more of mindset, like the Inuit. I mean, there's about as uh, you know, you want to talk about a prepper community. There you go, the Inuit. You know, it doesn't matter if the world blows itself to hell. They'll just keep fishing. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll, they'll go and hunt the caribou. They'll go uh, eat a polar bear or two, whatever. You know, uh, they won't have eighty-five kids. <laughs> you know, like that. Type of, you know I mean, although the, the, they do have a higher, the highest population growth in Canada, but they're smaller communities too. So, like, you know, they're, they're having an average of three kids each. But they are, you know, they're still within sustainable. So that's that's the thing there. Uh, but the world elites, yeah, like uh, in, the, in the first world, the world elites, if they were to pull the plug and the tractor trailer stop rolling tomorrow, within a day to two days, every supermarket is pretty much out. That's under normal conditions, under uh, economic collapse and people freaking out, give it a half an hour, your Walmart's empty, uh, that type of thing. So that's the things that you got to kind of think against, you know. And I guess I would leave it out about that because I think at the end of the day, people are starting to catch on that the government is creating way more problems than it's solving on purpose to make government bigger. So the inflation of people is a bad idea. And yes, food is a major weapon, so there's only one way to guard it. It takes about 16 weeks to grow an edible crop. So if you can't grow crops, uh, buy some food buckets. Get something ahead. Give, give yourself at least a, a, like a two-year buffer zone of food if you can, if you can you know, store it away. Even if you're in a small apartment, like uh, you know, five, five-gallon pails full of uh, something, you know, uh, food, sustainable food, you know, it might get you through a, uh, you know, crop failure or something like that. We're like one crop away right now because of, uh, you know, particularly under Obama where pretty much all the food has been, you know, instead of growing food, they've been growing eth corn for ethanol. Same here in Canada. You know, it's like wheat crops and barley crops and uh, uh, corn. You know, that's all people grow. You know, they grow other things like soybeans and whatever. But it's like the, 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 the diversity of crops are gone. So it's the organic farmer that's going to do well. And I, and I really want to push a, uh, I want to do well with my, you know, uh, well, I won't be using the greenhouse this year, but I want to do well with uh, some raised bed gardens and stuff like that. I want some cucumbers and tomatoes and potatoes and stuff like that. One year we had like 800, 800 pounds of potatoes. I couldn't believe that. That was a lot of potatoes. Stuff like that. Uh, but some of the stuff is hard to store. So the other thing is, uh, you know, looking at prepping food preparation. Uh, for long-term storage, that's a good idea. You don't have to go ridiculous with, like, you know, 10, 15 years worth of food because you can't move that stuff in a pinch and that type of thing. But it's good if you can have a buffer zone that you can take care of your family and maybe, you know, your relations or whatever. Um, hunting is, you know, in, in a, in a uh, you know, grid-down situation. Hunting is, is you know, that, that they're the first guy that goes out there shoots 60 deer to sell off the meat. You know what I mean? 100 deer, 200. Next thing you know, there's nothing out there. 
uh, and then everybody's starving. At that point, like in the 1930s, I mean, there was nothing left but maybe the odd squirrel. Even a squirrel was hard to find. You know, <laughs> so, you know, and with the amount of people we have now, most of them don't understand how hard and difficult it is to hunt. So that, that's not a viable... There's a reason why 100 years ago there wasn't 7 billion people on the planet is because you had to be self-reliant. And that's what we don't teach anymore. We teach that government has the solutions to everything, uh, but they don't. But anyway, that's your, you know, my take on it. So if you like this kind of content, please consider making a donation to the channel. Links down below. Thank you so much to everybody who has. Next time, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourself. Be true to others. So always do the right thing. And have yourselves a great day. Eh? Hey, and welcome. Q&A. Uh, for those of you who joined me for the very first time, this is me just responding to various questions and comments, even if they're old comments, that I got on various different videos. I never censor my comments. Always encourage people to jump in on the conversation. Whether we agree, disagree, or agree to disagree, always say your piece. Hold my pants up. All right. Not rich me. Do you think it's better and safer uh, anyone with who has the ability, people to be able to defend themselves uh, in space, even though it violates space treaty? Well, I think that's going on anyway. Um, yeah, like, I mean, it wouldn't... I, I know what's already going on. Like, I mean, uh, you've got satellites satellite warfare you've got uh, you know nukes in space so to speak uh, you got all that stuff already uh, you got the Star Wars program uh, satellite killers uh, you know these these space vehicles that pretty much can move at will in space uh, yeah, I've seen experiments with them I don't know how effective they are and how often you have to uh, you know go and maintain them stuff like that but these little uh, basically satellite killers they can maneuver in up down left right they just got thrusters all over the place. And I saw a Japanese experiment with one. It was U.S. research, but it's like this thing did this in, you know, in a room like, you know, a bigger room like this on Earth where the thing goes up. And it's like moving around like that with all these thrusters. So, like, I mean, this thing can reverse <laughs> whatever, uh, how effective and long range they are, I don't know. But they just have to get into place to make a kill shot on a satellite. The rest of the time they can just go in orbit, you know, 